Hi and welcome to another video from Peacock Archery. I'm Philip Watson and today we've got another maintenance video for you. We're going to dismantle and clean our release aid. Right, so let's take a quick walk around the equipment we've got. Um, first I've got some WD-40 which we're going to use as a cleaner and degreaser. I've got a large plastic bag. This one's Ziploc but it doesn't have to be. Just something big enough that we can get both our hands and the release aid in. I'll become, reason for that will become apparent very quickly. Uh, we've got a microfiber towel for cleaning up. We've got some uh, kitchen paper. We've got a set of suitable Allen keys. We've got the release aid itself. This one is my spare one. Um, it's a Carter Target 3, very reliable release aid. Um, worth mentioning that if it's still under warranty, taking it apart will void that warranty. So um, this one's well out of uh, warranty, so I'm not quite so worried about it. But certainly if it's a new release aid, don't even consider taking it apart. You know, take it to your local retailer and uh, let them have a go cleaning it if there's anything that needs doing inside. Um, got a small pot to put the small pieces in, um, an old toothbrush, a, a flat bladed screwdriver, a biter string tool, a target pin, and an old Archery GB membership card, all of which are there to do the same thing, which is help us pry the case apart. Um, I'm just to give you some options, I showed those ones. Um, what I'm actually going to use in this case is the biter string tool because it's a nice wedge shape and it's um, plastic so it's not going to do any damage to the um, anodizing on the release aid. Uh, and I've also got some cotton buds for cleaning in amongst small places and a pot to put small parts in as well. So first things first, let's get hold of the release aid. And I happen to know that behind that block is a small spring which sets the um, release tension. So I'm going to remove that one first. Keep my thumb over the top of it because I learnt to my cost some time ago. And if you don't, the spring launches this block halfway across the kitchen. And that's a little spring, so small parts go in there. So next thing I'm going to do is just loosen the other two Allen head screws that are holding things in place. I'm not going to remove them completely because inside here there's a bunch of small parts, including some small springs, which um, have a tendency to lose themselves absolutely everywhere. So, um, uh, and you'll spend the rest of your day trying to find them, which is not much fun. So with those captive, what I'm going to do now is just gently start prising the case apart. Everything's going to be held captive in here, it's not going to go anywhere. And once I've got the case moving like that, next thing I'm going to do is put the whole thing, including my Allen keys and the spudger, in the plastic bag. And I know it's a really quite awkward, actually they're probably loose enough for me to do with my fingers. I know it's awkward, but if something does go wrong, the likelihood is everything's going to stay contained inside the plastic bag, rather than fly halfway around the room. And this can be a little bit awkward. The set of pins that hold the two bits together, so you can just kind of wiggle the two bits apart. There we go, nearly there. Great. 
There's our first part, there's the top case. <clears throat> and at this point, it's probably worthwhile taking a picture so you can see where all of the components go. What I'm going to do now is put everything back inside for the next part, which is removing the springs. There's the first one out. And the next one. There we go. Good. Find it somewhere in the bag, put it in my little pot. Now we can safely remove the release aid from the bag. I'm going to put that to one side for the moment. So now it's just a case of removing the parts. I'm going to pop them in my little box so I don't lose them. Yep. So I've got two main components, which are the top and bottom part of the case. Cleaning is a pretty straightforward process. Just going to put some paper towel down. And literally, I'm just going to saturate those with WD and set to with a toothbrush. You want to get into all the little nooks and crannies inside the, the holes of the two parts of the case. Agitate away and remove as much of the grunge as you can. Once you're satisfied, if you need to, you can go in with a, a Q-tip cotton bud and just work your way into the little holes. Once you're satisfied, everything's nice and clean. You can start mopping up with the microfiber towel. The, our goal is to have basically the merest smear of WD left behind. And not really as a lubricant, more as a, um, uh, to keep moisture at bay. Um, obviously, we don't want to oil it, we don't want to use any grease or anything like that, because all that's going to do is attract dirt, and we don't really want anything in the way of the WD left, so it really is just kind of a haze. This is a little bit more awkward because it's got the pins in the way. We're going through the same process. There we go, so there's the other part. <clears throat> now we can bring out the innards and do the same thing. So, <clears throat> spray with WD. Agitate those with a toothbrush. So, as I said, this um, release aid's been taken apart and done fairly recently, so it's, it's not overly grubby. of the sears. This is the cocking lever. <clears throat> Here's the thumb lever. And get into these awkward spots just here, clean those all off. Right, so that's everything cleaned. Let's do a little bit of a tidy up. And now we can start with reassembly. So there's our top part. I like to start at the bale and work my way round. So I'll pop that on. Obviously we'll put the springs in last. This is obviously where a photograph of the 
um, of the insides will make a huge difference. <coughs> two main springs. So um, at this point it's safest to dig out your plastic bag again, pop everything back in. And sometimes a screwdriver can just help you effectively as a mandrel to put the spring on to kind of ease it into, into spot. There we go. So springs are in place. I'm just going to pull my thumb over those so we don't lose them. In goes the thumb trigger. reattach the top case. Keeping everything close in. I don't want this to spring apart at this point. We'll do up the two that are effectively holding the case together. firmly and on this one spring goes in make sure it sits down in the hole doesn't go sideways you can sometimes do that with the uh, target three put the plug in the right way around hold that in with my thumb and then the retaining screw for that Right, and at this point, <clears throat> it's just a case of checking the operation. So it should feel butter smooth. There shouldn't be any grinding, grunching, clicking, any feeling of kind of lumpiness as you're cocking the device. The bale should click closed nice and smoothly. And just before we try it on our bow, we want to Try it on a piece of paracord. And that feels great, so locks nicely, <clears throat> releases cleanly and smoothly. And that's that. So um, the insides of every release aid uh, tend to be a little bit different. Um, so target three, probably one of the simplest ones. Um, just a couple of springs and the, the sears. But the process is exactly the same for, um, for other release aids. Obviously the interns will be different. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks very much for watching and see you again next time.